I like them both. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator. Welcome to Video Game Versus. We're taking video games that are quite similar and seeing how they differentiate which one wins. I don't know, I guess whichever one is your favorite based on my description of it. So the two games that we're going to have a look at today are Super Flight and a more recent one called Impossible Soaring. Impossible Soaring came to my attention via the r slash gaming subreddit where the dev was handing out keys in order to get some feedback, so I guess that this can be considered a bit of feedback, hopefully more helpful than just uh, if I had done it in text or something like that. Um, and also, I think it would be helpful to compare it to a game that has found some success in this genre, which would basically be a flight score attack wingsuit game. <laughs> that's very specific, but that's about the best description that I can possibly give for it. So first, we'll start out with Super Flight. I really like Super Flight a lot. It's a game that I put about six hours into and I've gotten relatively good at it. Um, one thing that I will say about Super Flight is that they are much more generous with the score than they are in Impossible Soaring. There's also big pop-ups when you get like a combo multiplier and stuff like that. It says amazing, awesome, so close, instead of just uh, the couple of lines that are provided by Impossible Soaring. Now Impossible Soaring of course is early access, it might change in the future, but uh, as far as the scoring system goes, I think Super Flight has it much more correct. Superflight is also a game that is procedurally generated, so that means there are infinite maps that you can fly around on. I understand that some people aren't into the procedural generation because some maps definitely are duds, but overall I have a good time when I play Superflight, go through a portal, I can generally hit a decent score or at least spend some time finding a path that will help me hit a decent score. Impossible Soaring is much more straightforward. Their maps are static 100% of the time. There are a good amount of maps, but really it's hard to keep up with procedural generation, basically infinite maps. In order for Impossible Soaring to stand out, the maps will really have to be on point. And I think in a lot of ways that they are. There's a sunken city that has a lot of little tiny squares you can fly through for a giant multiplier boost. There's like a sewer pipe that runs under the sunken city that'll give you a decent amount of uh, points. And you don't find anything like that in Super Flight. So I really like the static map. I wouldn't say more than the procedural map, but there are definitely benefits to both of them. Another thing I can say about Super Flight is that it feels much more like a flight game. I think that has a lot to do with the wind. There's a lot of wind sound and a lot of wind feeling in Super Flight that you don't really get when you're playing Impossible Soaring. It does kind of come as a detriment to Super Flight in some ways, as you can't really predict which way the wind is going to blow. Sometimes you'll want to climb to the highest height of the map and won't be able to, which is not the case in Impossible Soaring. Impossible Soaring beats Super Flight in a few different ways. Information is clearly displayed on the screen. You have a meter. If it's full, you'll be able to fly. If it's not full, then you'll fall out of the sky. Superflight is just kind of like, well, you ran out of momentum, so that's it for you, which uh, I don't like as much. Impossible Soaring also features a health system. Um, in Superflight, you basically smash into one thing and that's it, runs over. But Impossible Soaring is a bit more generous and they'll allow you to crash and then as you fly your health will slowly regenerate which could allow up to probably three or four crashes per run which is extremely generous and I definitely like that in a score attack game because not all of your runs are going to be perfect it's just the nature of the beast you're going to have that dive into the air that ends smashing into a rock face in like less than three seconds so it's really nice when you're able to pick yourself back up, dust yourself off, and not lose all of the score that you've worked so hard to attain. I like the fact that Impossible Soaring has sort of a central little hub island 
there's probably going to be a lot more activities and things that you can do. There's a, a fisherman out there who's like, hey, you want to try sky fishing? But my flight score isn't quite high enough to try it yet. However, I really do appreciate that they're going above and beyond just being a flight score attack game and actually adding mini games and a bit more character to the, the hub island, which Superflight does not offer. Superflight is basically you're flying the entire time. There is no stopping unless you're dead. <laughs> On top of that, I would also like to state that Impossible Soaring has a much more pleasing aesthetic. I like the fact that you can customize your character. You could be a boy, you could be a girl, change your clothes, change your hairstyle, and I think something that simple does add a lot to a game. Now, the price point on Super Flight is extremely low. We don't have a price point yet on Impossible Soaring, but I would expect to pay a couple more dollars for Impossible Soaring. Superflight is currently at, on Steam for only $3, that is its full price, I think I managed to catch it on sale. Uh, in the Philippines it's only $2, so I probably paid about a dollar for Superflight, and considering the amount of playtime that it's gotten, I definitely, definitely believe that it's worth a dollar. Impossible Soaring, if it's fixed up, uh, if it comes out of early access looking a bit better and playing a bit better than it does, then I would be willing to drop $5. It's a really nice game. It does have a surprisingly different feel. When I was looking at the Reddit post and the gameplay video therein, I did not expect them to play so differently, but one allows you to rotate on the x-axis, and I think that makes a pretty big difference in how the game plays. Superflight feels a bit less... a bit less fluid. You're not allowed to move around as much in Superflight, where in Impossible Soaring you can hit these really hard bank turns and scoop yourself into uh, a loop-de-loop -loop or basically do whatever you want, which makes it really, really fun to play, especially with the fact that the flight gloves uh, allow you to just keep going. As long as your meter's full, you don't have to worry about falling out of the sky. And even if you do fall out of the sky, uh, you can basically pick yourself back up via the velocity that is given to you when you fall. So while you're falling, your your meter's filling back up because you are technically moving still in a downwards direction. It's a really, really interesting game. Um, I'm having a surprising amount of fun with it. I do plan to put some more hours into it and see just how good I can get. Um, as far as which game is better, it's really hard to say at the moment. I like them both a heck of a lot for different reasons. Right now, I would probably have to give Super Flight the edge, just because the scoring system is on point, if you'll forgive the pun. <laughs> but I think that Impossible Soaring could easily take the lead if the hub world is implemented and there's some more activities added uh, when you're when you're out on the, uh, the map, playing through the maps. I'd really like to see some objective-based gameplay in either of these, but just having the score attack is enough of an objective for me. I don't want it to become something like Radical Rockets, which I did play on my channel briefly, and uh, while it was okay, I never really got the hang of it. Um, I put about the same amount of time into Radical Rockets that I put into Superflight, and <laughs> the results were not good. Radical Rocket is more of a rage game, um, so I don't necessarily count it as either of these two because these two games do give you a lot of control. You can pull off some precision moves, and I really, really like the feel of it. So to do a quick breakdown, the advantages of Superflight would be the sound work. It is extremely good. The score system, it beats out Impossible Soaring by just a bit. The procedural generation, if you're into that, it, it will give you many, many hours of gameplay. Advantages of Impossible Soaring would be the infinite amount of flight, basically, that you get. Uh, you don't need to worry about crashing into the ground as much. The graphics are nicer. I really enjoy the, uh, the concept of a hub world, although it's a bit too early yet to see how that will be fleshed out. Character customization is a really nice thing as well, and uh, it could probably be easily expanded upon, which is super nice. Superflight doesn't have like any any skins or any unlockables. The focus is just on the score, and I see that Impossible Soaring is taking it a bit further than just that. So keep an eye out for Impossible Soaring. It'll be dropping on Steam at the end of this month, and uh, if you haven't checked out Superflight yet, it's a relatively low-key game, 
but it costs less than a cup of coffee expensive coffee at least <laughs> not the coffee I drink some good old tasters choice anyways <laughs> Uh, I appreciate you guys joining me. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Uh, if you have any games similar to this, I would love to hear about them. We can add them into the mix. Maybe uh, do a second round, and then we can have the finals or something like that. But at the moment, it's really hard for me to pick a winner between these two. It's basically what's more suited to your taste. So do you want to be able to turn on the X, X axis and... Uh, <laughs> x-axis and catch those sweet little bank turns or you know do you want a score system that feels slightly more generous and a little bit better but the truth is impossible soaring is not a full release so i won't judge it as such uh against super flight which is a full release uh i just wanted to make you guys aware that this is a genre and it is a genre that i found that i really enjoyed something that i didn't expect to enjoy but yeah I hope you guys will let me know what you think. Check out the links in the description to Twitter, Discord, Patreon. Big, big shout out to Nico the Legend for supporting on the Patreon. My most stalwart ally, I tell you. Anyways, friends, I hope to see you in the next one. This has been Video Game Versus. Super Flight Versus Impossible Soaring. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. And until the next one, bye bye one two three four goodbye goodbye see you again goodbye goodbye see you my friends <laughs>